When you join the United States Army, you're going off to basic training or OSIT, it's good to be in shape. I mean, they are gonna whip you into shape in basic training or in OSIT, but having some sort of kind of level of fitness prior to going is going to make it a little bit easier for you. So I have three specific things that I want you to work on to make sure that you're gonna be ready for basic training for OSIT to be ready to go to the United States Army. Before we dive into those three things, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button, click on that bell so you get alerts as soon as new videos go live, become a part of that notification platoon so you can get alerts as soon as new videos go live. Now let's dive into that very first one, which is weight standards. Down in the description box down below, I'll have a link to the chart, but essentially is what you're looking for is you're looking to be under those weight standards. Depending on how tall you are, male or female, there are different weight standards as far as what the military, what the army wants you to be under. If you're pretty close to that weight standard, you probably still wanna reduce it down some because you are going to gain weight in the army when you go off to basic training or OSIT, not because you're gonna be eating a bunch of fatty foods or anything, but because you're probably gonna be putting on some muscle. So you are gonna probably go over a little bit if you are pretty close to that threshold already. Now, if it is because of muscle, I mean, then they just do a tape standard on you where they have to tape your neck and your waist and everything to see how much body fat percentage you are. But if you wanna avoid that, then it's best to try to get well under that to have some room for you to gain some muscle weight and not have to be taped. It's not a bad thing to have to get taped if it is because of muscle. It happens with a lot of individuals, but nonetheless, if it's because of fat, then obviously you have to get it down because they're not gonna probably let you join the army if you're above that. So you wanna make sure to maintain those weight standards to determine you know, maybe a diet you have to do or whatever it is to do more workouts, to do more exercise, to get that fat reduced down so you can get under that weight limit because those weight limits are gonna be very key going off to basic. They're gonna be a determining factor of if you can or can't even join. A lower percentage of individuals may have to worry about like the minimum standard as well, because there is a minimum weight too. If you are under that minimum weight, then you need to put on some weight to be eligible to join. I've only really talked to, I think, one or two individuals that kind of had that problem, but nonetheless, that can still be a problem too. So the weight standards is an important thing to kind of focus on to make sure you're in that happy medium below the, the maximum, above the minimum, and you'd be in a good spot. That way you're successful and able to join the military, join the army, and not have to worry about going overweight or going underweight. The second one is cardio. And I know for a lot of individuals that work out a lot, maybe prior to the army or whatever, they don't really recommend doing a lot of cardio because you wanna build up muscle mass. But for the army, you do a lot of cardio. So I recommend that you make sure you're good on cardio. In the army, you're gonna be doing things that are cardio driven, like going for runs quite often, going on road marches, sometimes quite often, it really depends on the unit, but those are cardio based things you have to do in the army. And if you don't have a good cardio, you're just really strong, that's not gonna help you very much because even part of the physical fitness test, you have the two mile run, you have other events that are cardio based. So you gotta make sure you have a good cardio, good stamina to be able to keep up with those events. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you can run and road march at the same time. I mean, not at the same time, but do both those types of things that you can run and you can also road march. So doing things like going for runs for two miles, maybe to start off with, maybe one mile, even if you're in really bad shape and you gotta work up to that, but eventually getting past two miles because in the army, you won't do usually less than two miles, most cases anyways. Usually if you're doing like a platoon run, company run, something along those lines, it's usually like maybe three miles, four miles, five miles, six miles. It really just depends on the leadership and what they wanna do but getting to that baseline of being able to run two miles without stopping is very key. I'm not talking about you can just do a very slow two miles. You have to jog a little bit, walk for about half a mile and then jog a little bit more. No, you need to be able to do at a good steady pace two miles straight without having to stop to walk. Then once you can do that, then elevate a little bit more, do three miles, do four miles, all that kind of stuff. And maybe work in some sprints, whatever, to have good stamina to be able to do the runs. But Outside of just runs, you also wanna work on your road marching skills by maybe doing something like going hiking. Maybe you get something like a backpack, maybe a hiking bag, maybe you go to the army surplus store and get yourself a rucksack, right? Maybe a military surplus rucksack to be able to stuff maybe 40 pounds or something inside that ruck and be able to throw that on and go on a little bit of a hike, maybe a five mile, 10 mile, something along those lines. In basic training, you're probably gonna do like a 10 mile at a minimum type of thing but there's other scenarios too, especially in the army where you might do like 12 miles, other things where you might do only four miles, but maybe doing something prior to, to make sure that you can road march, that you are used to it, you can handle it, and you're not gonna have problems with like your feet, with your shin splints, with something along those lines. So 
making sure you kind of get into that rhythm of getting to the how it's going to work of how you're going to feel road marching how often you're road marching the army maybe not a whole lot it really just depends on the unit sometimes some units like to do it once a week some don't do it very often maybe only once a month maybe twice a year once a year it really depends on the unit but you want to make sure that if you are in that scenario where you end up in a unit that does road march often, you're in good enough shape, but also in basic training, because in basic training, you'll have opportunities where maybe you'll do some short road marches, but then towards the end, you have that minimum of a 10 mile road march that you have to do at the very end of your whole training cycle to, to finish everything off. So you wanna make sure you're in good enough shape for that as well, even though you will get whipped into shape, but you wanna make sure you're not going in there with some kind of surprises of, hey, my feet aren't uh, very well conditioned for this, and this is very hard type of thing. Now, while you're working out, Grunt Style actually has some workout gear. They have their whole line that's called Defined by Discipline, and I'm actually wearing one of their workout shirts right now. This shirt's actually pretty nice and comfortable. It's got the, the logos and everything there and some stuff on the back as well with the skull. You know, I love skulls, so awesome stuff there. You can check them out. They got some great workout shirts. They got some great jogging, like, you know, sweatpants and everything else. So check out their Defined by Discipline uh, line that they have available for you to be able to utilize while you're trying to get into shape. Maybe you're already in the army, maybe you're trying to get in the army, whatever, great workout attire. I'll have a link down in the description box down below. And if you utilize the promo code Chaos Army for your first purchase, you can even get 25% off. So definitely utilize that link down below to get yourself some great workout attire. that's very comfortable and awesome. Supports some veterans, supports my channel, check them out. Now, the third tip and the last one that I'll give to you is do push-ups, right? You're gonna do a ton of push-ups in basic training. So it's good to make sure you can do a push-up. I would hate for you to be in the scenario of showing up to basic training and you can barely do two push-ups, three push-ups, and you're struggling like hell. Especially with the newer style push-ups that they're doing for the Army Combat Fitness Test with the T push-ups. Making sure you can do those very easily, but also just regular push-ups as well. Not talking about doing push-ups on your knees because you need to do actual good push-ups with keeping your back straight, your elbows bent and everything, and good form, right? You wanna work on that good form. So make sure you can do something like, I don't know, 30 or more push-ups at a minimum probably. If you can go and let's say in less than two minutes, be able to knock out 30 push-ups without having to stop to rest, that's probably a good baseline. I mean, you're gonna get whipped into shape like I keep on saying in basic training, but going into it, you need to make sure you're prepared. That way you're not the person that gets picked on. You're not the person that gets singled out because they're not keeping up. So making sure that you can do the push-ups properly is very key before going to base train your exit. Now, when you go to do the arm combat fitness test, it's not just your regular push-ups. You have the, the T push-ups, which I'm hitting stuff over here, but you have to go all the way down, let your chest touch the ground, then expand your arms out and then bring yourself back to the push-up position and bring yourself back up. So working on that is gonna be very key as well. That way you can be good for the army combat fitness test, but even just standard push-ups too, because there's gonna be plenty of times you're probably gonna get smoked, you're probably gonna get dropped, you're gonna be told to start knocking out some push-ups and everything. And if you are the type of person that right now, if you were to drop and knock out some push-ups, you can't do more than five or something, you're gonna have some issues. So you gotta work on your push-ups. That was definitely one of my weak points when I went to basic training. I was fairly decent on cardio because I was a skinny individual mostly. So that was also allowed me to be good on weight type of thing as well. But I really did not do anything to work on like upper body strength. And so I struggled with push-ups. I did eventually get better in basic training, but the very first little bit, I was struggling like crazy with doing push-ups. I probably could only do, probably going into basic, maybe a max of like 15, 20, something like that. But by the time, you know, I, I got to the end of base training, I was able to meet the standards to be able to pass the, at the time, the Army Combat Fitness, or not the Army Combat Fitness test, but the APFT, the push-up sit up and two mile run. So I was able to pass that then. But if you don't go in there, then you're gonna have some kind of struggling phase before you finally do get to that phase. And that's what I did, I did just fine. But if you wanna have an easier time, then make sure you work on these things. Work on, make sure your weight's good, make sure your cardio is good, and make sure you can do some good push-ups. A lot of the other physical stuff is gonna come through basic training, through you doing PT with your unit once you get to your unit type of thing. But these are the three things I want you to make sure to focus on prior to going in, making sure that you are good on those. Whether right now you're already good on those, then cool. Maybe go in, rest assured that you probably will have a decent time going through basic training physically. But if you are hurting on any of those three, then that's something you probably wanna make sure you work on before you head off to basic training. There are some other factors as far as determining like if you're in good enough shape for joining the army and I actually did a video on that recently. Check this video out right here if you wanna find out am I in good enough shape to actually take off for basic training, to take off for the army. Check it out. Check out my links down in the description box down below for grunt style, for my social media. Thanks for hanging out. I'm Christopher Chaos. I'll see you next time. See ya.